welcome to the Festival of Storytellers. can't tell you how excited I am to be on right now. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks of, of excitement, uh, getting prepared, and I've done a lot of things in my life, but this has got to be close to the top. Thank you. And Reed is magnet. And I thank you, John, for um, putting this forth and taking the chance on our authors in, in, uh, in presenting this out to, to the world. I, I've enjoyed this immensely, Joanne. Ellie, so have I. Thank you for, for who you are. And thank you, Reader's Magnet. You all are beautiful and you've worked so very hard. And we are blessed. We are. I thank everybody that's involved with this process because we know writers need readers and writers need publishers. We thank Readers Magnet and everybody that's involved. I love Readers Magnet. They say, we share your stories with the world. afternoon. I'm Ellie Elephant, and I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Ilana Ashley. She's an educator and an author and an artist, and she writes poems and songs, and she's a storyteller, and she's also my mother. Thank you so much for that introduction. You're welcome. Are you going to join me in the program today? I don't think so, because I'm nervous. Well, that's up to you, sweetheart. You want to think about that another second? No, I'm going to say bye for now. I'm leaving the stage to you. Great. Okay. I'm going to give Ellie a chance to lie down because I know she wasn't sleeping well last night. That's true. You do watch out for me. I, I could tell that. I know that. I love you. Sweetheart, I love you too. Okay, I'm going to let you lie down. Thank you. Bye. I'm going to give Ellie a chance to lie down. I don't know whether you can see those pictures there, but not too great a picture here. Maybe you can see it this way. That's the top of where she's resting right now. Okay. And I'm picking up some books. So nice to be with you today. There's so many things I want to be sharing. I've decided to divide this session up into three parts. The first part will be background. Uh, yesterday, I was mentioning different things about me at different points throughout. And I, I'm going to try to put more of it all together right at the beginning. So it's going to be in about three 15-minute sessions. And then I'll stop and I'll take a look at the uh, questions and see whether people have comments or questions to share with me. I'm also going to be, yesterday I was sharing lots of different books that I've read, some that are published, some that are not published at all yet. And um, I'm just focusing today, it will be on two books. One will be on, and these are the most recent books, Big Bully, Holly Howler, and the adult book, which is a, an amazing lead in to this story. So I'm going to be starting with a background. 
Well, you heard Ellie mentioning a multiple of different uh, roles that I've had over actually many years now. Well, I have combined my work as an educator, as an artist, as an author, as a storyteller, as a poet, as a songwriter, combined it into educational and entertaining programs, starting as young as preschool and going up uh, through junior high, plus doing programs for educators, uh, families, parents, and in many different areas over the years. One was in child abuse prevention, another in uh, conflict resolution mediation, another in self-esteem character education. And, uh, and more and much more. And I've been taking these programs uh, throughout Illinois, certainly because I've been living in Illinois for the past 29 years now. And I've also been taking it to other states at different times, different years. Uh, one time, Michigan, uh, New Mexico, Las Vegas, especially to schools. And so for more than 20 years, I've been doing programming. And uh, it's been exciting. It's been a little bit laborious at times, especially because going distances sometimes as much as two hours in one direction, then setting up. And sometimes in a day, I'd be doing, let's say, four hour programs with uh, junior high students. Or I've done as many as five 45 minute literary assemblies. And then well, and then taking things down and then driving back, it's been kind of exhausting, not just kind of, it was. Days can be just so filled, it gets exciting. And then I gotta be wide awake to get myself back. Um, now, I wanna talk a little bit about my uh, background as an educator and, uh, and more, and about some of the things that I've been writing over the years. Now, one of the areas that I got involved with as a child was um, my interest and fascination with mythology, especially Greco-Roman, it seems as a very young child and later uh, Norse mythology, I guess more in high school. And that was apparently to affect me in terms of the directions I went in uh, for my later degrees. My doctoral degree is actually in ancient Near Eastern languages and literatures with an emphasis on Ugaritic mythology. Uh, and uh, you're talking about going back a couple centuries. <laughs> and uh, it's an early Semitic language. And I got involved with mythological texts, which were found in Northern Syria. At one time, the capital was Ugarit. Today, it's Ras Shamra. And all kinds of things were found at that site, among them, sacrificial lists, uh, there were diplomatic texts, and there were mythological texts. Life is interesting and strange, <laughs> but that's what I got involved with, Ugaritic mythology, and probably wrote the longest work ever, more than 400 pages. And uh, I think it really set me up for doing work in many different fields. 
I was really structuring things out, organizing myself and moving on to successfully complete quite a variety of projects. Now, I started writing a series of mythological stories. And one of the things um, I'd like to tell you about, uh, the beginning, for example, I really started with writing this particular story in Hebrew first. At that time in my life, I think I had a very good literary command and I was able to write this in Hebrew first. Then I translated it to English. It's called Gamliel Gimalbia the Sultan. And from there, I developed nine more stories all based on a family member of the Gamliel Gimalbia family. And the next story is called uh, Prince Ramliel, another one, the Princess Ariella, a fourth one, Baal Kesem Splunky and Ariella, are you real or a dream? Now, the interesting thing that I want to share with you is in this fourth story. You're about to learn of an important character who became very important and powerful in my life called Splunkunio Splunky. And Splunky appears in this fourth story. And it has to do with a, an evil magician who decides to mix all kinds of strange ingredients together into a magical pot. And out comes a character who is called Splunky. Three eyes as big as plums, a hand with 13 thumbs, 23 toes, and more. And uh, he sees a princess. He falls in love. And it goes on. And you'd probably be very surprised if you knew what happened in this story. But the important thing for you to hear is suddenly a character appeared which became very influential in my life. Now, um, I was at a point, and I'm, I hope I'm getting this historically correct, uh, because so many things have gone on in my life at different times. But I had called my father, who was in Germany, uh, he's passed away perhaps a little more than 12 years ago. And uh, he was a cosmic ray astrophysicist. And he had received a grant. And he was working, I believe it was called the Max Planck Institute in Bad Godesburg in Germany. And I said, if I don't get a job which I'm applying for, and I was one of two people who were applying for it, um, may I join you in Germany? And he said, absolutely. As it turns out, the job happened to have been at a university and neither one of us was chosen. So it was certainly a time I was ready to leave the country and do something a little bit different with my life. Now, what happened when I was there? Well, I had, someone had given me, kindly given me a guitar I wanted somehow, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I wanted to teach myself guitar. But that didn't happen because I developed bronchitis, unfortunately, very quickly. And I felt if I couldn't sing, I wasn't going to be able to enjoy my attempts at teaching myself guitar. So what I started to do started thinking about 
that character of Splunky. And my father, I traveled with my father from Germany to France where he was delivering a lecture. And while he was doing the talk, I was at a library. And at that library, it was astronomical work, astronomy, and heavenly images all over the place. And I was thinking, hmm, hmm, huh, just thinking about, should I write a story about Splunky in outer space? And the idea went back into the corner of my mind. And what I wound up doing in Germany, I purchased yarn and I crocheted a six foot version of Splunky. Eventually when I got back to the States, I even created a second one, which I sewed by hand. And so many things wound up happening at that point. Now, again, history, I'm not positive because I didn't check back exactly with the years, but I believe uh, that I, I do remember my father went back to the United States. I stayed in Germany a little bit longer. I was even walking along the Rhine with Splunky. Pretty crazy, huh? Well, after that, um, I wound up getting a position, I believe, for the next summer in Israel at an educational company. And I was supposed to be typing educational materials and helping to create some, everything in English. Well, this was a company that had started with computers. It was really the beginning of computers. And even that first afternoon when I went to this company and I looked at the screen, I absolutely went wild. The, the sizes, the shapes, the colors, the images, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Well, I spent three to four months from about eight in the morning to 4 p.m. working at this company, going back, and then creating what became one of my first books, though I have written others, but it is not, it's still not published. And what I want to show you, and I'm hoping, I don't know when, because I'm involved with a humongous project. If I have time, I'll tell you about it later, uh, a huge, art exhibition, which is scheduled for April of 2022. And I have to finish my artwork for that. But I will show you the front cover of something which I put together here. The Cosmic Adventures of Spunkunio Spunky, The Journey of Discovery, and The Hidden Quest. And I created a work with 55 cartoons. I really hadn't painted yet. Not with, I hadn't done artwork with paint, but with colored markers. And I'll give you a sense of the beginning of this. I don't think I'm going to be reading it. The text on here is very small, but I can show you what I can tell you, let's see whether I can turn this around properly, but Splunky happens to be from planet Anx. His parents are the king and queen of that palace. And there are six stories in here. Maybe I'll show you one more picture or two more pictures. Um, and here he is in his Splunky mobile. He left home. And I won't tell you 
why exactly now, but uh, he was on a mission. If you are interested in learning more about this 55 cartoon series, let me know. Okay. Now, um, I wound up writing three totally different books. And um, strangely enough, I put myself in these three books. Now, I brought... I'm trying to grab it now. And um, I was concerned about putting myself in a book, but I did it and I did it three times, in fact. The only one that I brought with me now is called Splunky's Mission of Peace. How Splunky met Ilana, Ellie, and Eli. And I can show you a picture or two. Splunky has changed from my two original ones. I asked somebody else who did this professionally, and, and I did it out of the joy and fun of creating Splunky. I tend to like this fellow here. This is present day Splunky. And uh, he talks about where he's from, which I've already mentioned. And uh, I'll just read a moment from here. My father and mother are king and queen of our planet. I am a prince. I'm a prince with a mission to bring friendship and peace to planet Earth. If that sounds of interest to you, let me know. There are uh, six stories in here. The last one is The War to End All Wars. And um, what I'd like to do is stop at this point <clears throat> and see what kind of questions were, are on here. Um, hi, Ellie. Looking good. <laughs> this is thank you, Fairgoer688. Uh, and okay, and somebody is saying, Hi, Ilana. It's nice to see you today. Very good. Finally, we are able to have you here. Florine, thank you. Thank you so much, Florine. Okay, now uh, think about whether any of the books you've heard about so far, which have not been published yet, and I, I, want, I would like to be able to have the time to speak with traditional publishers, and literary agents, um, so now what I'd like to do is to focus on the first book. Uh, so let me start with the following. Um, I decided I wanted to publish a series about Splunky and his mission. And it's called Splunkunio Splunky, Detective and Peacemaker. And I personally published several of the books and also another publishing company published two of them. And the first book is called, I'll mention it briefly, but my focus will be on the second one I show you. This is Blancunio Splunky, Detective and Peacemaker. This is case one, the missing friendship bracelet. Now, uh, after completing this story, and uh, it, uh, yeah, so it's about a bracelet that is lost. 
It deals with friendship and teamwork. And uh, I happen to have this book in hardback form, unlike the second book. But after I created the first book, I decided I wanted it translated to Spanish. In high school, I had learned French, uh, but not Spanish. So I got help from others to translate the book you just saw into an English Spanish, into a bilingual version. And here it is. So this is called El Brazalete de la Amistad Desaparecido. Now, I know a few words in Spanish, not too much for conversational. I might even be able to read a few words, but um, it was exciting for me to be able to broaden the people who could enjoy the book. And it's not only read by an individual child and the age group for both books is four to eight, um, but it can be read by a group of friends together. It can be read by uh, students in a class. It can be read by family members. In the first book, there are four storybook characters. Well, actually three and a narrator. <laughs> the second book, And this is the one I'd like to focus on and read a selection from it is case two, big bully, Holly Howler. And I also went the distance uh, and the pleasure of being able to have an edition of the book in the English Spanish. And uh, this one is La Gran Abusiva Holy Howler. And well, this, as you can tell from the title, is about bullying. Uh, it deals with a, um, well, what I'd like to do first before telling you more is to read a selection from it. And uh, actually I had started the first three to five pages yesterday. I'm gonna begin it from the beginning. And what I'd like to do is to, uh, I was trying to put the book on the other side. Let's, I wanna see whether I can read it better here. And the question is, can you see this well enough? I hope you can. And this is how it starts. Before the book starts, you're seeing a picture actually of Holly Howler. And she's saying, me, a bully? No way. And this is how the story begins on page one. Ellie Elephant was upset. When she felt that way, she knew how to get help. Ellie said her name aloud once and blinked three times. Within seconds, her friend magically appeared as he had done once before. Good day, Ellie, said Splunky. Big trouble at my school. We need a peacemaker. We need you. Splunky asked, What's going on? Ellie began. There's a new student, Holly Howler. Big Holly Howler, big bully Holly Howler. No one likes her. Why not? 
spunky question. Every time she serves kids to be the first in the lunch line, at recess, she grabs our basketball. Huh, wonder why, Splunky said. Yesterday, Holly grabbed the apple from my hand and put it on the teacher's desk as she came into the room. Mrs. B said, Holly, you're so sweet to think of me. Holly turned toward me and just smiled one of her ha ha ho ho smiles. She won our teacher's heart again. I said nothing. Everybody saw it and said nothing. Splunky said, let's call your best friend, Eli, and get his help as well. Eli came right over. Give me five, Splunky, said Eli. Hands up, L. Eli, Splunky responded. What's up, Ellie, asked Eli. I need a peacemaker. I want Splunky to set Holly straight. Who is Holly? Eli asked. A new girl in my class. I'll make suggestions, interrupted Splunky, but I know the two of you can work this out. Eli continued. Ellie, what happened? One morning I was walking into our classroom. Holly grabbed my scarf, started pulling it off and wrapping it around her arm. I yelled, stop! She would not listen. The bell rang. Holly dropped my scarf onto the floor and ran into the classroom laughing. What's wrong with her? Eli wondered aloud. I don't know and I don't care but I do know she should not act that way with me or anyone else. Agreed. Another day, my friend Zena brought her wagon to show us. At recess, Holly grabbed the wagon and Zena fell into the floor. Then Holly raced outside with Zena's wagon. Eli questioned Splunky. Have any ideas? This is the point at which I'm going to stop in here. You've gotten a sense of the background and various bullying situations. And it's going to be up to Ellie to do something really magical. And I will even say what it is. I consider it a magical transformation, transforming Holly, the bully, into a friend even into a personal friend. How could she do it? Well, that you're going to have to learn about by reading the book. Now, what makes this book uh, unique and special? Um, well, there, there are many things. First off, um, let's talk about the, um, I would say, the real life settings in the story. Now, children are comfortable with real life settings. So you're, you're seeing photos in a home, in a school, in the out of doors and uh, that is important it makes it makes children comfortable feel at home having real life settings like that 
in the story. Another important factor is that um, let's see. Well, the puppets themselves in this second story, in the first one, there were three. In the second one, there are eight. As a matter of fact, I did bring a picture so you can see. Let's see, I'll put it over here. So you can see, I hope you can see the, the whole crew under me makes it straighter, I think. <laughs> and that's Splunky on top. Me with them. I tend to like turquoise. Um, one of the things that I think makes this book unique is that, first of all, that there are puppets and not just any puppets, but animal puppets, because by using animal puppets, I am eliminating problems related to nationality, religion, race, ethnic backgrounds. There are plenty of other sources of problems, but at least those were eliminated with the use of animal puppets. Now puppets in general, just the use of puppets are fabulous as a medium in, in themselves. Over the years, uh, I actually began doing some of my uh, entertaining programs I'd have Splunky on the right, Ellie on the left, myself in the center. I'm noticing something here, so I'm going to stop. Do you consider writing another book and in a different genre? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. If there was time at the end, I can even talk about it now, if you like. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, very quickly, that there is a project I'm working on. I've been working on this project uh, since May of 2019. And it is an art exhibition. And it is called The Unveiling of the Universe and Beyond. And I will be writing a book to accompany my exhibition. And it is a story from the beginning of the universe, from the beginning of multiple universes, since that's in more recent years we've learned about. And uh, so it starts with, I started it with a painting which I don't have available right now, <laughs> um, which I call the core foundation of the universe. The core foundation from which all else emanates. And after creating this core foundation, I made eight paintings which surround it. And a lot of the beginning uh, focuses on sci-fi, fantasy, heavenly uh, realm. It eventually brings people to other places completely. Uh, I have a painting of our solar system, a painting of Earth. We arrive on Earth. I have two paintings from the age of dinosaurs, keeping on moving through history. We have uh, various forms, animals, birds, and fish, and ultimately the birth of mankind. And, and in that story of mankind, there are uh, so many directions that men and women and children go in. And I have paintings, um, mankind constructing homes, um, 
humanity building religious institutions. I have a painting of families from all around the world. And, and besides all the good things and all the accomplishments and achievements, there are also some sad things too, because there are some people who are evil and are going out of their way to create violence and vicious things going on. And uh, the series um, has good, bad, ugly, evil, beautiful, all mixed in together. And my ultimate mission with the book and with my exhibition is uh, twofold. One is to inspire, encourage and inspire individuals, children, adults, seniors to pursue their skills and talents, be open and free enough to go down pathways they may never even, even have thought about before and explore things. And what becomes very important is combine their efforts with people all around the world. And the um, ultimately the goal is for people to work together to create a global society which is based on the highest of ethical values and standards, showing dignity, respect, and honesty to everyone, a world filled with kindness, compassion, friendship, and love, a world in which equality, justice, and peace reign supreme. And that is my mission. And that is my goal to it for all that to be reaffirmed in the book I will be writing to accompany it. And it has so many different aspects to it. The paintings, each painting will be uh, connected to a song or a poem. And as a child, I wrote songs and poems. Over the years, I've written a lot and I'm continuing to do so. And in the book that I'm writing, um, hopefully every work of art will be accompanied by a, um, a literary work, whether it's poetry or a song, or maybe a small writing of prose. Um, getting back to my Splunky, someone had asked actually yesterday, um, something getting back to the book I was talking about and to the series Splunkunio Splunky Detective and Peacemaker. Well, the name Splunkunio Splunky does not in itself have a specific meaning for me, but Splunking is diving. And maybe he is diving into the mission of peace. And this mission for peace has been expressed in different ways, in different literary forms, such as in the story I wrote in which I am participating in it as well as a character. And uh, so that is, um, and as to why I included the name Splunky, he's been in so many different stories he represents his mission of helping to bring peace and friendship 
to planet Earth. And all of us need to be working on that together. It has to be something that we do as a global society. Now, I also um, wanted to focus on the second book, Okay, somebody else is asking me now, um, what would I choose as a spiritual animal, for example? Which, which one? Gosh. Well, that's hard to say. I mean, I have fallen in love with elephants. I've been working with Ellie and Eli for years. And uh, yesterday, I happened to be wearing a huge um, white necklace with elephants and also earrings with elephants. <laughs> um, in terms of spirituality, well, Ellie's a little girl, but she's capable of learning just like all of us can be when we are open and free. And everybody has their own beliefs, what's important to them. And um, people can make their own choices, certainly. But I do happen to particularly love animals. But as a spiritual animal, I do don't know whether I would say more at this time. Uh, what I'd like to continue with would be a, a little bit more about the adult book. Um, and I want to show you a picture of the adult book, which I have right here. Let's put it here, if you can see it here. I'll go back a little bit. <laughs> Bullying and prevention strategies. Interview with educator and author, Dr. Ilana Ashley. And a number of things about the book. Um, I created the painting on the front cover and this among many other works, close to 60 paintings will be in my exhibition. And um, I'd like to read you the back of the book. I could tell it to you, but it's right here. I think I'm going to turn myself around because the light is not working well. On this side, it's better. And here I am on the back cover. And I'm telling you what's in the book. In the third person, throughout her interview, educator and author Dr. Ilana Ashley provides a solid foundation for parents, educators, and adults concerned with comprehending the meaning of bullying, detecting warning signs of victims and bullies, learning varied strategies for coping with harassment, developing compassionate, healthy and safe methods for raising children as well as empowering themselves and their families with conflict resolution skills, positive self-esteem, and high values and ethical standards for peaceful learning, living, and loving. And at the bottom, I say, whether you are a parent, a teacher, or a family member, 
Thank you for caring about bullying issues and understanding that you have a role in the process of creating worldwide peace. So this is based on an interview, an hour interview that I had dealing with many of the topics that I've talked about, many of the issues that I talked about, uh, dealing with some of the features that make Big Bully Holly Howler special, I talked about in this book. Another thing which I did to make this, um, I hoped, more uh, interesting and more to ponder about. And um, here someone is just asking me a question. <laughs> if you could tell your younger writing self anything, what would it be? My younger writing self or anybody who's younger who wants to write. Well, it certainly helps to do a lot of reading of different kinds of genres. Uh, it can be anything. It depends on what, what you're interested in. Often we don't know until we start to read different kinds of literary works. Are you interested in fantasy? Are you interested in science fiction? Are you interested in mystery? What appeals to you? Well, you got to widen your mind to think about possibilities and find out what makes, what makes you think, what really makes you decide, this is something I want to talk about. This is something I'd like to try to illustrate about. I'm being asked, can I show my puppets? Well, I can. Ellie was here at the beginning. She said she was nervous. So what I could do is take her out again. And um, we'll see what she has to say. Um, okay. She is the only one that's with me now. What I will be doing is in my next session, which is I, I am going to take Ellie out. What I am going to uh, mention is that my plan is to bring Splunky out next week, possibly other characters who may not even be in this story, may not even be in Big Bully Holly Howler or even in the first one, uh, the missing friendship bracelet, possibly Drake the dragon, if you'd like to meet a dragon. But what I can do, didn't know I was going to be doing this, but that's fine. All righty. Here we go. I'm taking all the books that I have on here out. This is a little funny, a little strange, but I'm going to put this down and see whether I can't get Ellie to come out. You want to come out, sweetheart? Why? Well, because I think people would like to meet you. Uh-huh. Well, but I was sleeping, you know? Well, sweetheart, it's time to wake up. All right. Are you ready? No. Well, I want you to come out. Come on, let's, let's be nice. Fine. Just fine. Okay, I'm going to put this up here. Hi. I did introduce you. Yes, you did, sweetheart. That wasn't enough. Well, some people might not have been here at the beginning to even see you. Oh, do I look okay? You look fine, sweetheart. Um, I don't know what to say. Well, you want to sing a song? I don't think I'm ready to sing a song. Oh, okay. Um, 
what else? What else could you do? You want to recite a poem? Um, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. How about I remember a strange poem you taught me a long time ago. Okay. You want to say it out loud? All right. As I was sitting in my chair, I knew the bottom wasn't there, nor legs nor back, but I just sat ignoring little things like that. I think you did a great job. Thank you for, for sharing the poem. Do you remember the poem? I sure do, considering that I was the one who taught it to you. Of course, of course. Do you think you might want to sing something? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Well, you know, I told you I was nervous. I know, honey, I know, but but it's nice just to let yourself go. Just relax, sweetheart. I love you, honey. I love you back. Okay. Um, well, are you going to sing a song? I could sing part of the song. Well, you'll see how you feel. Um, I think I'm going to, if you let me just take a drink first. Do you got it? Well, that would be nice. Okay. All right. I'm going to just take a drink real quick. Can I have some water after I sing the song? Yes, you can. Okay. Here goes. I don't promise you I'm a good singer. Well, however you do will be just fine. I promise you. You ready? No, but I'll try it. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when times are great. I'm always great. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away don't take it away i think you did a pretty good job well thank you thank you um is it okay can i say goodbye now i suppose you can see ya why didn't you come and join us next week I'm, I am getting quieter. Um, I mean, I sang a song. Wow, that took a lot of guts. Yeah, I suppose so. I suppose so. Okay. Well, um, are you going to want me to put you away? Put me away? I don't like those words. Well, how about if I put you back um, where you were resting? Okay. See ya. Gotta go. And here, she's having her chance. <laughs> well, I had no idea that she would be coming out again. Um, so, fairgoer74427 says, Wow, you are very talented, Ilana. That is very sweet. Thank you. And, um, well, I'm excited for lots of reasons. Um, I hope you will join us again. I don't know where we are. I'm trying to see the time on here. Wow, I think we are about to say goodbye. So, um, I hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed meeting Ellie and look forward to meeting Splunky next week and possibly Drake the Dragon. 
maybe Octavian, maybe another puppet from Big Bully Holly Howler. I look forward to other opportunities of sharing with you. And uh, everybody have a terrific weekend. And I will be thinking about my five sessions next week, actually six sessions next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at two o'clock. So I hope you'll be able to join me again. And we're going to move on to other of my works. I want, I would like to read some sections from other, uh, other books that I have created. And if you're able to tell me if you might like to hear um, a story from, for example, uh, Splunky, let's say Splunky's Mission of Peace, or if you'd like to hear uh, from my mythology series, that would be great too. I look forward to possibilities and uh, some very spontaneous interacting with my puppet companions since um, obviously this was a surprise that Ellie popped out to join us. So thank you so much for being with me and please tell your friends to join us as well and they will have opportunities to ask us questions too. And I, I have lots to plan in my shows for next week. So bye for now. Ciao.